Today we're going to be working on an Uncanny X-Men sketch cover. The figure we're going to be working on today is Psylocke. Now I'm starting a little differently than I usually start my sketch covers. I'm going to sketch this one out digitally first. I'm going to be doing this for two reasons. One is I'm away at home at WonderCon. And two, this pose is a little trickier than the others. Actually make that three reasons. This will help me get the right size onto the page after. You'll see I actually do a lot of tweaking when I'm working digitally. A lot of liquify and just transform and moving and trying different things. I'm going back and forth between a couple poses, one where her left shoulder is up a little bit and another one where it's down. I'm just jumping back and forth between the two to figure out which one I like best. And ultimately I end up mixing both of them together into a single pose. Now that I'm satisfied with the pose, I can go ahead and get it ready to be transferred onto the sketch cover itself. That's where this graphite transfer paper comes in handy. I'm going to sandwich that graphite paper between the cover and this printout that I have. I print it out in blue so that when I go over it with pencil, I know where I've gone over and where I haven't. And you'll see in a bit, this will transfer the image over to the cover. The markings from the graphite paper were a little harder to erase than the regular pencils, so maybe next time I'll be a little bit more careful with that. Now that my landmarks are transferred and in place, I'm going to use the pencil to bring back those details. Using my good old kneaded eraser to soften up those pencils so that I can get to inking. I'm going to be using the Molotow fine liners again to ink this up. I've used ink and nibs before, but the way I have to jump in and out of these things, it makes a lot more sense to use something that I can just cap up and open again when I need to.
Now I'm not sure why I started on her hair already. I wanted to do the background first. I don't know if I was either scatterbrained or excited, but I guess I just wanted to see what the purple would look like. And now for some masking, because you guessed it, I'm gonna be using the Copric airbrush system again. I did have some serious issues with this mask though. The mask was too sticky, I also cut in too deep. I ended up tearing the paper in some places. Uh oh, there it is. Now I'm just hoping it's just that part. But as I kept peeling, I kept finding spots that were tearing. But I'm gonna keep going because I don't think it's that serious of an issue. I can cover that up with some marker. This is probably the worst tear of the bunch. But let's keep going, see if we can save it. This time I'm sticking it to the clipboard first to try to get some of that stickiness out. So what I've learned from doing these covers is that the paper is not always the same. Some will take the marker better than others, some will be more resilient to tearing, and you just never know. I was contemplating just cutting out a big white square for the uncanny word, but I decided to just go for it, and hopefully I don't mess it up. I'm wrapping the interior pages with some paper so I don't get any overspray on it when I do the airbrush part. Now the idea for this background was to do a sort of studio gradient backdrop. I couldn't decide between a pink and purple color scheme or a teal green, but I decided to go with the more classic pink and purple for her. It was actually tougher than I thought to get a straight line out of this airbrush. Much respect to the airbrush artist out there. You guys make it look easy. Most of the time I'll start the skin with an E50 or E51 base and then go in a little darker with an E11 or E21. I think in this case I was using E21 because E11 was a little dry.
I'm just using black Copic marker to do the shadows on her suit. But I find to get a nice deep black, you're gonna have to go over it maybe two or three times. Just let it dry in between. I was a little out of it, I started coloring her suit purple, but luckily the markers are pretty forgiving, so I was able to just go back in with the blue. My shadows on skin are almost always V93 or V95. Now this is just my way of doing things, it's not right or wrong, it's just my way of doing it. The battery ran out for the very last bit, but here's the finished piece. Thank you guys for watching, and if you like this stuff, please visit my shop. I have prints and stickers available, and I might have some finished sketch covers available.